The Bear is one of my favorite TV shows ever, and over the last three years, we've gotten three seasons of Near Perfect TV. And with the release of season three, I believe this series has taken such a massive yet essential shift, and it's more precise, it's more heartbreaking, and even more exhilarating. While, yes, it might be shying away from the overall story, it does keep that addiction of greatness at its core. And more than ever, the newest season feels like a part one of two, which I'll touch more on later, but that's what makes this show so special to me, and that's why I have so much to say. What would you tell yourself? Um, I think I'd tell myself that you have no idea what you're doing, and therefore you're invincible. Before we get into more of my thoughts on The Bear Season 3, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you do enjoy my reviews, over 98% of you guys who watch these videos aren't yet subscribed. So if you don't want to miss any of them, hit that button. Well, don't waste any more time. Let's get right into it. I have so many thoughts on The Bear Season 3. There'll be timestamps linked in the description. But I want to start off with the storytelling because this is where The Bear Season 3 differentiates itself from Seasons 1 and 2. This season is not nearly as linear as what we've seen in previous seasons, which leaves a lot of the overall plot behind behind, which I actually don't really mind in a weird sense. Even though this is a season three, a lot of this season feels like a prelude, not to the bear, but more so Carmi himself. You don't think I can do it? Are you for real right now? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I know I sound crazy when I say that, but even last season, yes, we were focused on Carmi, but not the traumatic aspect of Carmi. I think the introduction of a lot of different side characters and bringing them into the what is Carmi trying to become aspect of it all fades away in this season. It was so prominent in season two, but here, a lot of this uh, backstory and fast-paced montage, a lot of it is just to give us more of the core of Carmi that we've been missing throughout the seasons thus far. And in the first two seasons it worked. Without him having to grapple with his past, he could constantly move forward and the bear is what it is, but him actually trying to challenge himself and come to terms with his trauma in a sense of let me just be the greatest so all the trauma goes away. And why I think the core of the storytelling has gotten so different here is not just because of how non-linear the storytelling is, but the last few seasons have just been fast. -paced. It feels like, okay, yeah, let's evolve, but Let's evolve by bringing ourselves back to the origin. I mean, there's a, basically a whole episode dedicated to Mikey's trauma. Not Carmi's, but Mikey's, and how that connects with Tina, and how Tina further connects to the bear, and how the bear obviously connects to Carmi. And why this zigzag of connections works for me is because the evolution of this show within this season doesn't feel like it's based in the bear itself. It feels like it's based in Carmi's arc. It's not necessarily that he himself needed to learn or to change change, but he just needs to accept and understand the problems that he's facing, which I believe does happen by the final episode. And there's literally an episode that synopsis is Carmi thinks about apologizing. If that doesn't encapsulate not only the season, but Carmi, his arc, his ideals, his character evolution, I don't know what does. You wanted to be excellent, so you got rid of all the bullshit and you concentrated and you got focused and you got great. You got excellent. It worked. You're here. Look at all this. We obviously have to talk about Jeremy Allen White. He is absolutely amazing. I don't know how to describe the brutality of his character, but it really just hits me hard. I mean, the desperation, the desire, the pressure, the passion. I... I do feel it all to my core, and it's not necessarily that I relate to him because he is sometimes clinically insane, but his passion and his dedication is felt through the screen and i truly think that is just jeremy allen white i've seen him in some other roles obviously most notably recently the iron claw and he is phenomenal in that but i think just Carmi is a special and lifetime defining role for him. And as for the overall cast, Ao Adebri is fucking phenomenal, especially in that finale, but she also has a directorial debut in this season and it is absolutely amazing. It's one of, in my opinion, the most pivotal moments of the entire series, the final 15 minutes of episode six, where Tina and Mikey are having a conversation that truly defines the entire series as a whole. It was all put on Ao Adebri's shoulders and she knocks it out of the park. Uh, Abby Ellis 
Natalie. She plays Natalie, and she basically gets her own episode where where she's giving birth, and another very slow burn episode that I feel like a lot of people might say it's directionless, but. I personally think it's actually really amazing and not only does Abby Elliott's acting and Jamie Lee Curtis's acting just go hand in hand but they truly make me not only understand the mother-daughter relationship but the relationship that their mother had with Carmi and Mikey as well. Oh, Carmi, yeah, that's a... It's like, it's like a little bit rough but I don't know, it's, it's something... No, man, that's... It's, it's beautiful, Carmi. It's, I could do this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let her rip. And then John Bernthal, of course, as Mikey. I mean, in the Thanksgiving episode last season, he definitely got to flex the acting chops more. But I feel like in regards to what this character really is and the, in the legacy that he leaves in The Bear... I think we've seen more of that character this season, and I absolutely love it. Ebon Moss, Backrack, who plays Richie, is also absolutely hilarious in this season. He doesn't have as much of an emotional arc, I think, as the last season, but... He plays his part. He argues the hell out of Carmi. He had his time to shine last season. So I feel like when Tina gets a whole episode and he does, and I'm not that mad. Speaking of Tina, Lisa Zayas has a basically entire episode to herself. And she is absolutely amazing. There's one point where she breaks. And I absolutely love that moment because it says so much about her character in the best way possible. And one thing I really wanted to mention with this season in particular was the visual differences. Because it's not necessarily that the gear itself was different, but the style felt drastically different uh visually it does feel less filmic to me i guess okay this sounds crazy but i feel like the visuals this season truly evolved with carmy's character on a technical level they still do use the re alexa mini lf with the panavision h series lens which is also what they use in the holdovers along with obviously film emulation and the filmic look is still present but the composition itself feels so different. Everything feels so much wider, but it also feels still handheld, still feels focused on the faces, but the kitchen felt bigger, the dinners felt more grand, but the storylines stayed personal. The first episode in particular still sits with me in regards to not only how fast everything moved, but the moments it did slow down, the rare moments it did slow down, it made me sit with who these characters are what I saw and what I liked and disliked them in the past and how I truly feel like they're going to evolve throughout this season. And going hand in hand with the visuals is actually the dialogue because I feel like more than ever, even in some of my favorite seasons of television ever, this is the most purposeful dialogue I've ever witnessed. At least in the first half of the season, words felt so sacred here, something this show has never really done because obviously there's a screaming match every five seconds between Carmi and Richie, but undeniably this season feels like it, it was so explored within a montage style, which I really did like. The writing feels precise yet loose, and I mean that in that the first two seasons had a lot of individualism to them, but season three feels like it's taking its time because there is time to take. I'll get into my one big flaw with this season in just a second here, but even to preface and kind of excuse it, the thematic arcs of becoming who you fear and the literal exploration of how much of an asshole Carmi is, is so blatant, but it's so exciting to me. That in and of itself is so entertaining and so engaging to me that I kind of forget and, and don't really mind the overall problems still looming. And that leads me to the one flaw, I guess, and that is that this story definitely has zero conclusion in this season. But the reason I don't really care is because it literally says to be continued at the end. We're going to get a season four. I'd obviously be much more pissed if we weren't going to get a season four. But this feels like something I guess in a modern comparison is doing part one and part two where there is just a way bigger story and overall arc that you're trying to tell and not only that but there's so many arcs and there's so many stories that are trying to be told that even though you want to spend time on an individual Tina episode, and I totally get why people might be like, why the f*** are we doing that? They have time. They're taking their time. And I'd rather them take their time than squeeze it into literally five arcs in one episode. At the end of the day, the Bear Season 3 
takes what seasons one and two did character wise but truly spreads it out they take their time and they're truly confident the overall story arcs that yes we're gonna wait till a season four for the overall story to cap off but i think there's some amazing catalysts in this series and some amazing just very low-key moments that make you understand the series as a whole so much better overall the bear season three is coming in at a nine out of ten for me i talk much more about this series on my podcast you can check that out it'll be linked in the description down below and if you don't want to miss out on more of my reviews you can hit that subscribe button down below thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time peace